It's important in, uh, in number four, we have to locate the essence of the experience. The essence of the experience, for me, other people will, you know, might disagree with this, but the, lo the, the essence of any phenomenological uh, experience is, for me, always um, an emotional experience. It is cognitive, right? And we'll talk about this in a second. It's definitely cognitive, but it's an emotional, it's a visceral, it's a gut feeling. It's like, I was in ecstasy. I was, I was horrified. I was angry as hell. I was, I was petrified. I was, it's that, it's that feeling, right? So, um, locate. So I would say, um, the essence of the ex a phenomenological experience is an emotional experience. Um, people might disagree with that, but that's how I'm going to present this lecture. Okay, so that's uh, number four. Number five, um, the account of their experience includes, the, the account of the participants' experience includes what was experienced, obviously, and how, um, how they, the, individual, the individuals, experienced it, right? So, what was... And then the second, right, so this would be like A and B. And the second is how it was. So when you're going, you know, for, and I, actually I don't know if I have this in here. I might have to add uh, another page. Um, I might have to. Uh, as you know, um, when you begin your thesis research or you're doing your dissertation research, there's two types of questions you're going to ask. You're going to ask a very, very broad general research question. But then you're going to, if you're doing qualitative research, but then you're also going to need to ask um, interview questions. Your interview questions, all of those questions, and I, I, I don't want to get into too much detail on this now, but your um, interview questions should reinforce your research question. With respect to your interview questions, um, you're going to have to ask the individual, what, so, you know, tell me about the experience. You know, tell me about when you left the house. What was the conditions when you left the house? Tell me about when you first arrived at, at the, at the, your first night at the, um, the women's shelter, right? So tell me about your first night at the women's shelter is a question. Um, I would ask the deeper question, tell me about how you felt during the first night of your stay at the women's shelter. It's the same question, but it's going to elicit a better response from the participant. It's going to elicit a more empathic response from the participant. Tell me about the first night, your first night at the shelter is sort of like this Q&A, very sort of... Uh, um, sterilized Q&A, right? You don't, personally speaking, I don't like questions like that, right? Because it's, then I feel like I, I, you know, as a participant, and you should always be empathizing with the participant, that it's, it's, it's less caring. Uh, and I don't, you, as a researcher, always want to have, just like medical doctors need to have bedside manners, um, and just say, hey, you know, you only have a few months to live. Um, similarly, research, researchers in relationship with the participant need a, a sense, like, I don't know if we have a phrase for it, but there needs to be some decorum, some bedside matters, right? Um, so it's not like, tell me about your first night at uh, the women's shelter. Um, tell, can you tell me uh, about how you felt the first night you stayed uh, at the women's shelter? And that's going to, you know, the woman, I would imagine, would say, I was dot, 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 whatever it is that she was. Um, it's going to elicit a better, a better response. So what was experienced is more of the, tell me about the first night, at the shelter, and there needs to be some general questions. You know, how many kids do you have? How many kids were with you? How many days were you at the uh, the women's shelter? But then there's also how it was experienced, right? How did you feel your time there? When you finally left, how how was your experience finally leaving? Um, were you able to move into a new home? How was your experience moving into the new home? Two different types of questions, right? Um, and as I said, I'm a young researcher myself. I don't profess to have any expertise on this. I mean. Um, I don't really think anybody has any expertise at this because, you know, communities change, populations change, people change, so our qualitative research methods have to adapt and they are continuously going to be changing as well. Alright, so that's that. Alright, the next account is uh, the three elements of phenomenology. And um, I know we talked about, what did we just talk about? Five elements of phenomenological research. As, as a research discipline, now we're going to talk about phenomenology. I wouldn't say proper, because I would have to really do like a philosophical account of phenomenology. The funny thing is, as a philosopher, we didn't go, I never learned about phenomenological research until maybe the last year, like around dissertation phase of my graduate experience. And then obviously, being uh, a professor now, I know quite a bit about it. But as philosophers, 
we don't read um, phenomenology and continental philosophy as a research tool. It was strictly theory. Um, and the way that I really would present phenomenolo phenomenological research, it, were I to do it on my own, would be a, a completely non-conventional. Because I, you know, I think to do it justice, you really have to have a very, very strong understanding of sort of how continental philosophy came about, the role of existential phenomenological research, and um, that is contingent on phenomenology, existentialism as a discipline. And phenomenology, existentialism as a discipline, isn't it? It influences phenomenological research, but it isn't phenomenological research, right? It's it's a different sort of um, different mode. But I'm not going to get into that because this is a discourse on phenomenological research. So the three elements of phenomenology, um, I put like a small p here because it's not phenomenology proper. I would have to do like a real analysis of um, phenomenology. All right, so this is three elements All right, so the first element, um, and this is a quote from, where's this quote from? The quote's from Creswell. Um, one, this is a quote, the study, one of the elements is that it is the study of the lived experiences of persons. So that's fine, right? The study, I'm not going to write that down, you can see that in the notes. The first is that, I'll write a little bit down, lived experience, I'll just write it. So it's the study of the lived experience of individuals. Um, the experience is a conscious process, right? It's a conscious process. Whenever we're talking about um, phenomenological research, and whenever we're talking about phenomenology, and here's why I said, I mean, just the conscious part, I mean, there's, I could do like a 10-part lecture on just the consciousness of phenomenology, but I'm not going to get into that. But the experience is a conscious process. Um, it's sort of general acclaim, but I'll try and discuss it a little bit, right? It's a conscious process. How does this relate to um, phenomenological research? You have to recognize, um, and I'm not going to try, I'm, I don't want to get too out there, but you have to recognize in selecting phenomenological research as your qualitative methodology that as a researcher engaging a participant, um, the, the participant doesn't know, some participants will want to be prepped with the questions that they'll receive. For some research, having them have the questions beforehand might undermine some of the things that you're trying to find. So it depends on what type of research, phenomenological research that you're going to do. Imagine that the, the person doesn't know what the questions are that you're going to ask them. Insofar as you ask them the question, the person, in a sense, has to relive that experience, whatever that experience might have been. So, for example, in the case of the, uh, the women in the domestic shelter, she has to put herself back in that women's shelter. Right? She has to put herself back in time uh, and sort of recount, recount her experience. That conscious experience, is, it's, it's, it's critical to recognize that she, he, whoever the participant is, in responding to your questions in, within the interview is reliving, in a sense, this experience. Right? It won't have the same visceral emotion as it did when I was first there viewing the performance or engage in the activity, but there is a sense in which the person um, conceptually, cognitively, has to put him or herself back into that state of affairs. Insofar as we put the person back in the state of affairs, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. And I mean, you've seen this in countless documentaries. The person will be telling the story, and this is what happened, and this is what happened, and the person is in the experience, consciously. And there's a point of the experience that's just so visceral, that's just so painful, and the person will physically start to cry, right? There's an emotional response to it. Why is there an emotional response? Because the, the person is conscious of um, the effects that happen, or what led to it. So we have to be careful, uh, and there's much more I'd like to go into it, but I don't want to get into too much because, you know, this is an introductory account of the various forms. In recognizing that uh, it's a conscious process, it's not simply the case that it's a conscious process, right? Uh, and Creswell's not saying that, right? It's not just, duh, it's conscious. Everything that we do is conscious. Obviously, it's conscious. Why is it important to know that it's a conscious process? It's a conscious process because you, as the researcher, have to take into consideration and, in a sense, are ethically obligated to realize and recognize that you are putting this individual back in time, back in that event. It could be a good event or a bad event, right? And insofar as you're putting the person back into that event, um, you need to be very, very gentle in doing that, right? Because, especially if the participant doesn't know what the questions are going to be, um, 
since it's a lived experience, I'm reliving that account, right? I'm reliving um, those events, and it can draw up uh, really, really dangerous uh, emotions.